Yo, what is up guys? We are back. You're defending NPL Season 8 Champions. The Montreal Habsals are back for another season. We're back for Season 9. And uh, we got a hell of a team this time. Uh, I mean, we had a hell of a team last time. It brought us to uh, technically semifinals, but uh, but we did win the championship with it. But uh, this is our draft analysis for this season. And uh, I know I haven't uploaded in a while, guys. I know I was supposed to upload a second game for that league war that we had with the uh, NPA. Um, but that game never actually happened. I didn't explain that to you guys. Uh, Kelly, I think, just dipped from Pokemon in general. So, uh, I mean good for him uh he's he's allowed to do what he wants but uh obviously we can have our game as a result and uh because of that i didn't end up uploading a video and i should have given you guys an explanation uh, i was waiting until the npl started back up uh to to really get any videos going so uh yeah that's that's pretty much why but uh but yeah all that aside uh i'm gonna be showing you guys my team for this season uh, and we're gonna be starting off with the third pick in the draft uh, now things like Tapu Lele, Celestila and stuff like that were, were obviously available um, so, uh, I wanted Lele as a first pick and I wanted to build around it uh, and see how much better I could do with it than Merc um, And see if I could actually take me into playoffs and, and really give me a good shot at winning uh, the entire thing uh, But unfortunately Techno had a pick before us and he grabbed Lele so, uh, unfortunately, uh, we ended up with, uh, with a, I mean, a really, really bad pick third. Uh, we have Lando T. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, not a bad pick at all. Lando T, obviously one of the, uh, the better Pokemon in, uh, in the game in general. If you guys have ever played the ladder, which I'm hoping you have, I mean, you guys all watch me, so, uh, you must have played Showdown at one point or another. Uh, then you guys know, uh, just how good this thing is. Uh, its ability to intimidate, its great speed tier at 91, uh, giving it a great scarfing speed, a uh, great attack at 145. Um, obviously, Earthquake Stab, uh, it is one of my Z-Mons, cost at 18 Z points out of 25. Uh, so I'll be able to use Z-Fly, Z-Ground, Z-Rock with Stone Edge, Super Power, like, uh, the works uh, with this thing. And uh, being able to set up Rocks, Defog, uh, I believe it gets access to... Hold on, I want to check this before saying it. No, it doesn't get done. Uh, all right. Well, um, yeah, like I said, Stealth Rocks, uh, Defog. It's it's a good uh, support mon as well. But I'm mostly going to be using it to break uh, access to Swords Dance and, and uh, Rock Polish as well as a Sweeper. It makes it uh, really hard to stop. Uh, can run a plethora of really really good items. So I'm going to be looking into all of those, obviously. So that's uh, that's Lando. Uh, now I wanted to build around Lando correctly. Uh, I felt like getting a good special breaker to pair with it uh, because of its inability to like break bulky grounds, for example, uh, outside of like setting up and, and zing them, which you can play around. Um, I wanted to get a uh, really, really, really strong water, <laughs> and uh, that water is going to be Keldeo. Uh, Calio, uh, as you guys saw, this thing is named Motorhead. Um, all of my mons are named after bands or artists, so get ready for that. That's the theme this season. Uh, we got Calio the Keldeo um, coming in here with, uh, with just spamming really strong water moves and fighting moves like uh, Scald, Hydro Pump, Focus Blast, uh, Secret Sword. Um, just a, a really solid mon overall. Obviously, it's got its physical set. We won't talk too much about it. I couldn't Z this thing because I Z Lando, uh, but that's not its role. Its role is really just to uh, to break grounds, break uh, a lot of things that Lando can't. So hopefully, it'll be able to do that. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet. Uh, I already recorded this, but the desktop audio wasn't recording, so uh, that's why we're doing this again. But uh, I'm actually gonna bring this up a little bit. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's Keldeo. Now, mainly what I wanted to do with Lando was I wanted to support it with uh, a, a, like a sort of turn turn core, uh, really allow it to uh, take full advantage of U-turn and bring in big threats. One of them being Keldeo. Um, to pair with its its U-turning, I got Mega Scizor, uh, Metallica here, uh, with uh, with U-turn. Obviously, going to be a big big problem for a lot of teams. Uh, as you can see, I already recorded this video because all the EVs are already in here. It's got a good uh, base speed of uh, of 273. Uh, at max, base 75 obviously. Uh, 150 attack makes it a monster setup sweeper with Swords Dance Bullet Punch. That priority technician boosted bullet punch is just awesome. Uh, quad weakness to fire obviously mitigated a little bit by Keldeo and by the next one, which you'll see. Um, just a really solid mon, a great defensive tank as well. 7140 is really hard to break on the physical side. Like a lot of uh, like close combat spammers can't really do much to it. Uh, one of Lando's biggest feats is that it, it switches in really well to fighting types, but not if they predict and go for like a nice type. 
uh, Scizor can. It can pretty much always do that. Uh, obviously, they can run fire coverage, like, for example, Lopinny can run Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Metacham can, I believe, do the same. Uh, so there's there's always that I have to deal with, and that's kind of why I have the next one once again, you'll see. Uh, but uh, as another de defogger uh, with re reliable recovery this time in Roost, um, it's a, like I said, its ability to set up sweep, its coverage is really good with knockoff. Uh, both these two get knockoff, so that's going to be really useful for getting rid of important items that Mons need. Um, this, uh, this thing has, like I said, great coverage, knockoff, superpower, pursued is a great, uh, great move to have for, like, the Lotties and stuff. Um, and just, yeah, uh, Bug Bite, obviously, something that you can take, uh, advantage of. Curse is something that I'm gonna want to use this season, uh, because it's, I feel like it's semi-unexplored. With, uh, with Scizor, it's a relatively new move that Scizor can run, uh, on its sets, so. And I feel that Mega Scizor does it really well in front of physical threats, so. Yeah, that's that. Uh, moving on to the next one. Sorry, needed some water. Uh, like I said, it's something that's going to be able to take a lot of hits for uh, Lano and for Scizor simultaneously, and that is Fran Shushu, <laughs> our, uh, our Alamomola. If you've watched Zombieland Saga, you know what this is referencing. So, uh, Alamomola, a couple of key things here. Obviously, its defense stat is way better than its spadef, but it's able to be a spadef tank because of the fact that it has such high, high HP. Um... Its HP with wishes passed to other mons. Uh, basically, if they're uninvested, like all these three right here, if they don't have any HP investment, they heal like about 75 to 80% of their health through one of Allo's wishes, which is insane. Um, being able to switch them in, take a huge hit, and then just like heal all of it back is amazing. I think that Allo's one of the best uh, wish passers in the, uh, in the draft league meta because of its ability to regenerate its health back as it switches out. Pokemon like Umbreon uh, and other Wish Passers have problems with that because they need to be checks to other things during the game uh, and they need their full health at times. So they, they'll often just stay in and protect. Allo doesn't always need to do that. It doesn't always need to protect. In fact, if, if anything's going to run only Wish and not protect, Allo's probably one of the best to do it. Uh, because of its its ability to just heal itself when it when it switches. So uh, only two things, big things threatening this thing are going to be like special um, special electric, special grasses, and very very strong physical and um, electrics and grasses uh, that can possibly break through its defense. But uh, but for the most part, Aloe is going to tank pretty much everything. It's got a little bit of an issue with um, with Toxic, so that's something I'm going to watch. Have to watch out for. Obviously, Scizor can switch in on Toxic. I'm going to need a Cleric on the team though, possibly one to two Poison types as well. I'm saying this because I have two Poison types, uh, as you'll see later. But uh, Aloe can also run uh, a lot of really good items like uh, Salt Vest, Leftovers, uh, even the the 50 uh, the 50 percent berries because if it ever drops below uh, 25, it'll get back a lot of its health that same turn. So, uh, a lot of really good things here uh, with Alamomola. Moving on, uh, I wanted a, an absolute breaker on this team. And something that these two U-turning into could cause havoc for an opponent. Uh, and so, I decided to get a Mon that I feel that isn't uh, too uh, explored in Draft League. Or rather, hasn't been taken full advantage of. And that's uh, Hoop Unbound. Uh, so a lot of people scoff at this mon because uh, Psychic Dark obviously being quad weak to U-turn, but the thing is this slow turn turn core right here um, can outslow U-turners and bring in Hoopa on more favorable matchups and not at times where it's going to take uh, a buttload of damage from a U-turn. So yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at its stats. Uh, obviously huge breaking stats, 160, 170. Uh, this plus Hyperspace Fury is basically unstoppable. Protect doesn't even stop it. So if you catch a Wish uh, on the switch into Hoopa, that's huge. There's no way to, to halt it. Um, obviously, Pokemon immune to Dark, uh, will, will, or immune to Psychic, rather, uh, on like Zen Headbutt or whatever, will, will be able to stop it on any given turn. But like, there's a lot of prediction game that goes into that. As you can see, I have Throw Chop on this set. Uh, that's a Master J Classic. Uh, definitely something I'm going to be bringing as a meme if I do well. Uh, otherwise, it's not coming, guys. Don't get too excited. Facade is interesting. If this thing gets burned, it's uh, it's a cool move to spam against a lot of teams. But mainly, like, Choice Man and Choice Spec sets are hell to switch into with this thing. Absolute hell. So, that's what I'm looking to take advantage of with Scizor and Lando, is getting in Hoopa pretty much as often as I can. Uh, it's got a lot of other really cool options, like Trick, Trick Room... Uh, it gets uh, really good coverage, like Energy Ball, um, 
Gunk Shot, Grass Knot, uh, Thunderbolt, Signal Beam, uh, all of those. Uh, obviously, its stabs are really good. Fighting coverage with Focus Blast and stuff. So, um, so just a really good mod overall. And I, I don't understand why it doesn't see more play. It really just takes getting it in as often as you can and just breaking the team in front of you. And like Dark plus Psychic. Like what stops that, <laughs> right? What what stops Dark plus Psychic? It's it's very it's a it's a very tough combination to to switch into. So uh, that's that's gonna be one big thing here uh, on my team. I'm basically gonna be trying to build around these five. Like that's gonna be how I'm gonna be looking approaching this draft. I think last season it was like Coco Mega Arrow that I wanted to to build around, and this time it's like. My heavy focus is like on Lando and Mega Scizor and making sure they stay alive as often as they can so that I can, or as long as they can rather, so I can bring in my bigger threats uh, safely. So that's that's what I'm trying to do here. Moving on, we have uh, another Mon that can gain me momentum into Hoopa a little bit of a different way. We have ACDC, the, uh, the Jolteon, and uh, Bolt Switch, but also you see the one move that I put on here was Baton Pass, and that's a big thing. And I'm mentioning this because... I want my opponents to know that I can baton pass on their ground type. That their ground type is not always safe to switch into Jolteon. Because if their ground type gets messed up by Keldeo or by Hoopa, and there's no way to stop it, Jolteon's gonna go in after. So, uh, watch out for your ground types, people. I'm definitely gonna be running baton pass a few times. So, um, Jolteon is obviously gonna run a, a pretty standard item set. Uh, it's either going to be Flame Orb for its Quick Feed ability, or it's going to run like Life Orb, Specs, Scarf, um, what even Wise Glasses, for example, or like Magnet uh, to boost its uh, its electric moves in Bolt Switch and Thunderbolt to, to get off the most damage I can. Things like that. So um, that's going to be something that my opponents are going to know about this thing. It's a pretty straightforward one. There are a couple of cool things that it can do, don't get me wrong. But, uh, but for the most part, I'm going to be looking into just going for, um, for, like, momentum with Jolteon. That's, that's its big role on the team. It's not really there to try to win games, even though it can't. It definitely can on its own. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's Jolt. Uh, moving on, I got another ground type. Uh, <laughs> it's a recurring theme of this draft, is that I'm going to be having a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, doubled and triple types. I already have double water. I have, uh, and now I have double ground, uh, with Rhyperior, uh, and John Denver here is gonna be our second Stealth Rocker, and that's pretty much what it's gonna be there to do. Rhyperior is a great mon at breaking, don't get me wrong, base 140 attack is almost equivalent with Lando, it's, it's very, very strong. Uh, it's access to Swords Dance as well as Rock Polish makes it a very scary sweeper option, but that's not why I drafted it. I drafted it because it's a flying check, and up until now my only flying check was Jolteon, and I don't like that. But as a pair, Rhyperior and Jolteon do a great job of checking flyings, whereas the rest of my team hates flying types. So, uh, like, Rhyperior can't take on Tornadus because of the option of Grass Knot. Jolteon doesn't care. <laughs> Jolteon comes in as faster than Torn and can just get momentum on it. So, uh, Rhyperior is there to take on, like, a lot of physical flying types, I would say, like, for example, Staraptor. Solid Rock allows it to take close combat like it's nothing if it's fully defensive. So, uh, just just things like that, um, I think, are going to be the big thing that Rhyperior is going to come for. Uh, setting up rocks, obviously, is going to be a big part of its game. Uh, its ability to phase, uh, as well, as I think, is going to be pretty important. Uh, just uh, Roar and Dragon Tail are going to be really nice. Obviously, uh, I don't have spikes on this team. You don't know that yet, but I don't have spikes on this team. And, um, but I do have T-Spikes, and I do have a lot of momentum, so that's going to help me out a lot with weakening teams, if I'm able to phase them as well. If I'm able to force switches with Lando and Scizor, and I'm able to phase with Rhyperior, uh, I'm looking pretty good for an endgame with, like, a Scarfed Hoopa, or a Scarfed Keldeo, or a Bullet Punch Scizor. And that's what I'm trying to do with this team. So Rhyperior is going to be there for that and pretty much nothing else. But we'll see. We'll see if it ever comes with uh, with interesting sets. You guys will just have to wait. Next up, we got a uh, dragon type. Now, i uh, making myself a little bit weak to ice with this and this and now this. But we got Dragology. And uh, Dragology is strong. Because of adaptability, Dragology is, is really strong. <laughs> like... This is basically plus two because of specs and uh, adaptability. Like, Draco kills things. 
<laughs> Draco honestly just kills things. Like, Specs Draco in Gen 5 was impossible to switch into. It was just so hard because there were no fairies. <laughs> so you didn't have immunities. But the problem with Dragalge is that it kills fairies too. <laughs> with Sludge Wave. And you're gonna argue, yeah, okay, there are some fairies that, that don't take any damage from Sludge Wave, obviously, you know, like Klefki and, and Magirna, and well, Magirna's not allowed. And Klefki, uh, I don't know how well Klefki takes hidden powers from Specs Dragalge, but it can't be too well, <laughs> because uh, I'm pretty sure it's like almost two hit KO'd, if not two hit KO'd. So, uh, yeah, there, there's not too much that can stop Dragalge, even now. Uh, it really just takes a little bit of a prediction with Sludge Wave, but Dragalge's main focus is obviously going to be as uh, a special wall uh, because of its great spadef, its ability to run a self vest quite comfortably uh, with a pretty high spadef stat, obviously. Uh, spadef like this, it switches in on ice beams like they're not a problem. Um, and it's able to retaliate against a lot of Pokemon to get Ice Beam's coverage just because of its strong stabs and its, its good hidden, well, its good coverage with Focus Blast and hidden powers. It gets access to stuff like Shadow Ball as well, Thunderbolt, Scald, and Hydro Pump. So those are obviously options, but maybe not something I'm going to run as often. Uh, it's mainly here for T-Spikes. I think that it's a really good T-Spike setter. It threatens a, lo a lot of Mons that my team sort of has trouble with. Like, outside of Z-Fly, Lando doesn't really deal with grass types too well, neither do the rest of my mons, uh, so, except for Scizor. So I think having, uh, like, one to two poisons on a team like this is important, and not only that, having uh, a mon that can absorb T-Spikes, because Aloe is going to be a huge key to keeping this team alive. So absorbing T-Spikes are going to be super important. I needed a grounded poison, so I found a dragon that's also a grounded poison, and that's going to be really nice for me, I feel. Uh, speed's not the greatest, 44, uh, but it can still run a Scarf. It can definitely still run a Scarf in certain matchups, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, it can outspeed a lot of base 95s, for example. So, uh, not 95, sorry, 90s. With this speed, it can outspeed base 90s uh, with a Scarf, so that's always going to be ha have to be something in the back of my opponent's heads. So yeah, uh, that's Imagine Dragons, the, uh, the Dragology. Moving on to Katy Perry, the Gardevoir. So... Um, what I really felt this team lacked was a way to deal with, like, weather teams, because this is not a great weather check. Uh, it's an okay sand check, but it's not a good rain check, uh, because things like Ludicolo, for example, and, uh, just the fact that it doesn't have the greatest spit F. Uh, I felt like Gardevoir was a good way to keep rain in check, because, you know, like, things like this and this, um, are, are very important to killing rain sweepers. Um, and obviously Moonblast for like Kingdra, uh, just Weather Sweepers in general. Uh, these, these moves are super important, and, uh, Trace with a Choice Scarf makes you faster than Rain Sweepers, I believe, with, like, this much speed. So, um, or just, sorry, Weather Sweepers, I keep saying Rain Sweepers, but Weather Sweepers in general, uh, are typically outsped by a set similar to this. Uh, we're obviously running, like, Max this, and then the rest here. So... That's, uh, that's part of why it's there. Also, my team did not switch into dragons <laughs> very well. Uh, Scizor can, but not every dragon. There are some dragons that it just destroys. Obviously, Zardex is going to be an issue, but like this, this, you know. Uh, I think I'll be okay against Zardex, but, uh, but like most other dragons, uh, Gardevoir is going to be able to, to take on quite well. I have the only dragon poison. So I don't need to worry about that. Uh, Iron Tails randomly coming out are going to be obviously an issue, but uh, I believe Gardevoir can eat at least one, especially with like this investment. So uh, having a response to dragons, just a switch in, a first time switch in is just uh, probably a really good thing to have. Uh, it gets Wish on its own, which is really cool because it can run Calm Mind, uh, so it can support itself. It also gets Heal Bell. It's my only Cleric. Um, this has he uh, has Healing Wish, but uh, Gardevoir. I think, uh, yeah, Gardevoir is my only heal beller, so it's, uh, it's, it's very good to have. Uh, you need that with an Alamolo, obviously, and having a fast heal beller is nice. Uh, Taunt for stall breaking is really good. Keldeo gets the same thing. So uh, I think as a, as a stall breaking core, these two together pretty much do the job. There might not be any stall teams, but I wanted to prepare for it just in case. So yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much that. Uh, Gardevoir is going to be there mainly as a choice uh, scarf user as well as a, uh, a dragon sponge, uh, a special sponge as well in case I can't bring Dragalge to a certain game. They have very similar uh, spadef spreads, um, so AV works on both. 
And yeah, uh, it's also going to be there as a, as a cleric, so be looking out for that, uh, Katy Perry. Moving on to Taylor Swift, the go-go. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see here, I have like Superpower Earthquake Leech Seed on the set. This is supposed to be Foreign Leech. Um, this plus Milk Drink plus like Life Orb switching in on a Grass Attack. I got this thing mainly because I needed a uh, Grass type or like an Arrows check in general. As you see, my team did not switch into Arrows very well. Alo can handle it, but it doesn't like the Toxic set. Obviously, neither does Go-Goat, but Go-Goat can at least like pressure the Zygarde forms out, uh, or at least roar them out. Uh, for the most part, it's able to, to deal with them. Uh, it's got a really good special attack stat of 97, which means that it's uh, almost as good as Lando at, um, like it just needs a little bit of investment, basically, to have the same powered HP ice as Lando. Uh, like we do this, 221, this hits 224, so it only needs about this. And basically it can already deal with, um, with like the Zygarde forms because of its ability to HP ice them. And on top of that, it takes a lot less damage than Lando from um, from the Zygarde forms. Yes, its defense isn't the greatest, but uh, it has recovery and it also has the grass typing, which makes it resistant to arrows. So they have to spam outrage. Not so safe while this is around, but, uh, but basically I, I really wanted a grass type on the team. Having access to Leech Seed is really good. Uh, because that plus Alamola, like these two swapping in together, uh, like around with each other, is very, very annoying to deal with. Because this thing resists uh, electric and grass and even gets a boost from opposing grass moves. And this thing resists ice uh, for for this. So uh, I, th I think that having these two together is, is, is going to be really, really, really annoying for teams. I think just having any grass type with leech seed in general with Alamola is really nice. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the grass type on the team. Three points. I think it's definitely worth the, the, the point value. Um, let's take a life orb off of there for a second. Um, as a defensive wall, I think that it'll do a good job. It's, it's got bulk up as well. It's got, uh, a really high HP stat. So I think that's going to be a nice combo. Moving on. We got another, another ground type. Yes. Another one. Uh, we already saw two psychics. We saw two waters. We saw two grounds. Um, now we have a third ground <laughs> and basically I wanted Moltres. Okay. I wanted Moltres, but it got sniped for me the round that I took, uh, guard of war. I thought I was safe to wait one more round for Moltres. I was going to get it the next round and it got taken and I wanted it as a Z pairing with Lando because I wanted another defogger. And I thought that, uh, for spikes, because my team is quite spike weak, as you can see, that Moltres would do the job. It, it typically can deal with a lot of spikers. Obviously, it's got the quad rock weakness, but it can deal for the most part. So I wanted Moltres. I thought that Moltres was a super good pairing, especially like switching into fire types for Scizor, uh, or switching into fightings and getting them burned, or, you know, like opposing Scizor, for example. Regular Scizor, obviously. But unfortunately, it got sniped. Uh, I'll be speaking with Specstar to see if he wants to give that up. If it's not doing him any well, then uh, we'll try to we'll try to we'll still try to get it. Don't worry. But uh, but we got another ground. We got Nirvana, the Golurk. Now this is more of the Mon that I'm going to be using to like surprise. Uh, I don't want to say surprise because people can obviously see it coming, but uh, more so take advantage of the fact that I have multiple grounds because this is my other Z Mon. So. Um, Having rock polish with this thing is a lot more potent because of this speed right here that it hits when it's when it's uh, jolly. 209 is really good because it's able to outspeed all the base 135s uh, like Mega Lopany, Mega uh, Manectric, uh, outspeeds Coco, outspeeds uh, like regular Aerodactyl, all of those. Uh, Iron Fist and No Guard are both really good abilities because uh, No Guard won't let you miss Stone Edge and Iron Fist will turn your Ice Punch into a Stone Edge, uh, essentially. So, yeah, uh, very, very um, solid attacks that. Also, another Stealth Rocker, obviously. So all my Stealth Rockers are ground, which is something that's a little bit easy to counter, I guess you could say, because you can bring one Mon to deal with the three, like one really powerful Scarfed Ice type, um, and it'll deal with, uh, with all three. But... I have good ice responses at the beginning of my draft, and I would even call uh, Hoopa a good switch into special ice types because they pretty much, uh, yeah, no, 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 most special ice types will fear Hoopa. Um, and they'll be like forced out immediately and you'll get like a kill or a lot of damage on something at the very least. So yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Um, 
So I, I like the triple ground. I don't mind it because obviously these two are probably never going to come to the same game. So let's, let's be honest. I think that with Lando, all I wanted was like support roles uh, for the team. And while neither of these resist water and neither of them resist ice and all of them take damage from grass types, this four effective, this two times effective and this neutral, uh, I still think that having that multi ground type on the team, that multi ground typing, uh, makes it very hard for my opponents to want to gain momentum on me. Uh, for example, Volt Switch is not going to be free. Because you will have to predict one of my grounds coming in. Almost always. So, or my Jolteon. <laughs> so that's that's basically what's going to end up happening, is that people are almost never going to run Volt Switch against me, I feel. Um, I could be wrong. We'll see. Uh, depends on how many people watch this and how many people want to prove me wrong. But you know what? A lot of people watched this last season. And a lot of people said that my not having a water type last season, not having a, or, or a bulky rot water rather, and not having a, a fire type on the team was going to come back and haunt me. And it didn't. <laughs> it never did. And you guys were quite wrong about that. So we'll see if, uh, if you're able to take advantage of my quote unquote weaknesses this time around. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, that's, uh, that's Nirvana. I have one more mod on the team. I needed another Defogger. I needed something off the ground because I w it, it was not going to, no pun intended, but it was not going to fly uh, for me to have this many spike weaknesses, to be uh, for my team to be this spike weak, and me not have a defogger other than Lando or Scizor, which want to be more offensive most of the time. Like, binding Mega Scizor into a defensive role is cruel. It's, it's like a waste of a, a really good Mega pick. So... I think that getting another Defogger was quite quite important. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to bring it to every game. Uh, a lot of times, I'm just going to stop the spikes from going up initially. <laughs> I'm either going to break the spiker really quickly, or I'm going to uh, taunt it with my fast taunters, uh, or I'm going to do something about it. But for the games where I can't, we have Ozzy Osbourne, the bat eater himself, <laughs> the gold bat. Um, I already have a set on here, as you guys can see. Uh, Eviolite Light with this kind of spread is gonna give me, like, a lot of bulk. Like, just for example, this... Let me drop this down to 220, this up to 201. I want to, no, okay, 200. Uh, so... There's a reason I have this speed as well. So, like, for example, if we take a look at this, um, a spread like this... Obviously, this is a classic MV... AK or Aster J set. Um, either one, really. So, like 220, this gets uh, to 330, this gets to 300, and this is 353. That's a very bulky mod. And on top of that, it outspeeds most walls. So, it can stall break with taunt super fang. It can roost on them, and it can just defog and get rid of those hazards. And it has infiltrator, so it doesn't care about sub. Inner focus might be something to think about, by the way, uh, at some point in, in the season. We'll see. Uh, I, might, I may bring it to stop a couple of certain very annoying flinchers, but uh, but that's yet to be seen because I do have other really good checks to those. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's Golbat. Um, it's uh, it's really just here for the defogging role. And like the last six mods on the team, like this, 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 and this, like those six, uh, Rhyperior, I'll go over them, <laughs> Drek Algae, Guard of War, Go Go, Golurk, and Golbat. Yeah, you did hear that right. Gardevoir, uh, Gol uh, Go Go, Golurk, Golbat. Four Gs at the end. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. That just happened. Uh, but those six are support roles, and I feel like the first six Lando, Keldeo, Mega Scizor, Aloe, Hoop Unbound, and Jolteon are the ones that are going to be coming to the most games. Whereas the last six are going to alternate between themselves. Obviously, I can't bring six plus whatever's in the back over here on the, on the final six. But I can bring, um, let me see if I can just do this. Okay, yeah. Uh, but I can, like, swap out some of the ones at the beginning for the ones at the uh, at the end, obviously. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the team. There's not much to talk about. Uh, also, Golbat, a uh, very important asset once again. Slow turn. Very slow turn. Well, it's not super slow, but it's slow enough. It's slow enough to where, like, it'll force switches with sets like this. It'll force mons to just get the hell out. And then it'll you turn on switches, and it'll get this in, and this will get a kill. <laughs> that's that's basically how I'm gonna be playing this team. I'm gonna be playing with my breakers. Uh, so like Dragalgy and Gardevoir can both be considered breakers. Obviously, Lando and Keldeo are as well. Hoopa's the one to watch out for for the for the most part. Like people are gonna have to be like, oh crap, okay. Either I have to like let this thing kill something and pursue it, or catch it when it comes in. So, I think getting this this momentum into uh into these breakers is going to be 
the key to winning this season because that that's the hardest thing to deal with i feel that as a player is trying to switch around uh you have to be willing to make plays and like while i'm not the most like play makey person um i'm gonna be forcing my opponents to have to adapt their styles to me and to how i'm playing and i feel like a team like this really does that job well so that's the team um Obviously, you guys should know my Zemons by now. Flyanium, uh, well, it's not down to Flyanium, but um, Zlando and Z Golurk. So I'm gonna be looking to maybe make some transactions. Like I said, I want to get that Moltres. Uh, I'd love to get that instead of this uh, Golurk, and then I'll maybe swap out something else. I don't know what uh, for a um, for another Rocker because I will not have Rhyperior and Lando be my only Rockers. No way. So yeah, um, that's it. You guys better get ready because the first game is tomorrow. Uh, it's going up tomorrow. I'm going to be recording it in an instant, uh, in a few seconds, right after I finish this recording. So be looking out for that. And uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, if you guys do enjoy the team, if you guys like the way it looks, if you guys have any suggestions on how you, I could possibly improve it, and I will look into them to see if said mons are available, so on and so forth. Uh, then definitely leave those comments in the description down below. Uh, not in the description. In the comment section down below. I want to hear them. Uh, if you guys want to go and check out the other coaches this season, because we have a hell of a roster. Uh, the NPL is not dead. The NPL just had an overhaul. That's that's all it is. Uh, we're, we are back in full force, and we've got really, really strong coaches this season. So go and check them out. Their links are in the description down below. If you want to see everybody's drafts really quickly, what you can do is you can go to the National Pokeball League's channel, which will also be in the description down below. They have uploaded the draft stream to their channel if you didn't get a chance to check it out live on Twitch. You can go and see the replay there and see what everybody got. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys, uh, as usual. And uh, I'm so glad to be saying this again. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Ciao.